Have you ever wondered why some people invest in Portugal and other people invest in Greece? In this video, I am going to explain to you the difference between these different countries and how the programs work, and maybe that will help you make the decision of which program is more suitable for you. My name is Alana and I work for Magronis. We are a global citizenship and residency by investment company. So the first thing you have to consider is how do you actually qualify to become a resident of either Portugal or Greece. In most cases people opt to follow the golden visa investment route. So let me compare the two for you. In the case of Portugal, there's nine different investment routes available for you to become a golden visa investment holder. 99% of clients invest either in real estate or they make an investment in a fund. If you invest in real estate, you can invest as little as 280,000 euros. And if you choose to invest in a fund, the minimum investment amount is 500,000 euros. If you compare that to Greece, in Greece you can make a real estate investment for 250,000 euros. And if you want to invest in a fund or a government bond or a company, you have to invest 400,000 euros. So that's the main difference between the investment categories of the two programs. There's significantly more information available about all the options, and you can find that uh, in the link below in the text of the video. So the next thing you have to consider when you compare these two countries is what does your family structure actually look like? Let's start again with Portugal. In the case of Portugal, as the main applicant, you can include your spouse, you can include both sets of parents, and you can include your children. If you include your children, they have to be financially dependent on you, they have to be single, and they have to be full-time students for the whole duration of the residency program. In the case of your parents in Portugal, if they are 55 and older and financially dependent on you, you can include them. If they're older than 65, Portuguese law automatically considers them dependent, so you don't have to prove that dependency anymore. If we look at how the Greek program works, in Greece you can also include three generations, so the main applicant plus the spouse, but in the Greek case you can only include your children up to the age of 21, unless they are full-time students in Greece, in which case you can include them up to the age of 24. In terms of the parents, you can include your parents at any age and regardless of whether they are dependent on you or not. So one of the important things you have to consider when you compare the programs is how does the residency period actually work. So in the case of Portugal, you are issued a two-year residency permit in the beginning and that permit renews every two years. In order for it to renew though, you have to spend time in Portugal. So under the golden visa rules, you have to spend one week in the first year and then two weeks in every two year period thereafter. So a total of 35 days in the country is required for you to be allowed to apply for citizenship at the end of that period. If we look at how the Greek program works, in Greece you are issued with a permanent residency card on day one. It's issued for five years. There's no stay requirement whatsoever in Greece and you literally only have to go back every five years to do your biometrics and renew your residency. You do, however, have to maintain the underlying investment. So if you invested in that 250,000 euro property, you have to keep that 250,000 euro property for as long as you wish to retain your residency. If you want to apply for citizenship in Greece, though it changes a little bit, you have to physically relocate and move to Greece, and you have to live there permanently for five years out of a seven year period, after which you are allowed to apply for citizenship. That naturalization process, though, takes about three years. So it's a 10 year period before you can really expect to receive your uh, Greek citizenship. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits. What do you actually get once you have this residency permit? In the case of Portugal, you get a work permit, you get access to free healthcare, you get access to free local schooling, not private schools, only local schools. In the case of Greece, and I was told I'm not allowed to make a joke about how productive people are, but strangely enough, in Greece, you do not get a work permit when you apply for a golden visa. You are, however, able to access free healthcare and free education for your children as well in the public system. So what else is required before you can apply for citizenship? In the case of Portugal, you have to show that you've built ties with community and you have to pass a level A2 Portuguese language test. In the case of Greece, it's a little bit harder. There's a reason why people say this sounds like Greek. You have to be able to speak fluent Greek 
and you have to also learn about the mythology and the history before you are allowed to apply for citizenship. Okay, let's talk about the dreaded topic taxes again. In the case of Portugal, they have a very interesting tax regime called the Non-Habitual Residency Tax System, which was launched in 2009 and is specifically focused on reducing people's tax on their fixed income. So this is typically pensionable income or income from a 401k or from rental income. And in some cases it can also be applied against work-related work income. But it requires quite a bit of tax planning. If we look at how the Greek program works, they don't have exactly the same type of tax system. They do have something called a non-DOM tax regime where you can consolidate your tax affairs in Greece and commit to pay a minimum of 100,000 euros tax per annum on your worldwide income. So in summary, from past conversations with the different people, the main difference between these two programs for people is that Portugal only requires you to visit seven days a year and you are able to apply for citizenship after five years without actually living in the country permanently. Whereas on the Greek side, you have to become a permanent resident of Greek. You have Greece, you have to live there for five out of a seven year period, which means you become a taxpayer there. And only then are you allowed to apply for citizenship. I have prepared a lot more detailed comparisons for you and you can find that information in the link below this video. If you like this video, then please do subscribe to our channel and give me your feedback, add some commentary uh, or send me a text. My WhatsApp number is in the detail below and I'd love to have a conversation with you. Thank you and goodbye.